It has finally happened. Starlink has announced its genius new update, and it's looking pretty good for the space exploration agency SpaceX. The updated device released by SpaceX is going to be lighter, yet faster. For those unaware, Starlink is essentially a network of satellites that is able to provide high-speed internet on the ground without any need for the traditional infrastructure. However, more work is required in this field if the satellite internet by SpaceX is to be perfected. So, what kind of benefits can be expected with the new Starlink update? And how is it looking a few years into the future? Let's have a look in this video. When the term satellite internet is brought up, it is often not a positive statement. This is because satellite internet was known to be unreliable and inefficient in the past, with extremely low browsing speeds. In today's fast-paced world, high-speed internet is required, whether it be for communication through video calls, gaming, or even streaming movies online, and Starlink claims to do just that. Starlink delivers high-speed, low-latency broadband internet around the globe. Using modern satellites in a low orbit, Starlink enables video chats, online gaming, streaming, and other high data rate activities that traditionally have not been possible with satellite internet. In fact, users should expect to experience download speeds between 100 megabits per second and 200 megabits per second with latency as low as 20 milliseconds in most places. All things considered, that is a remarkable speed for not just a satellite internet connection, but any connection at all. As far as the price is concerned, users in the US have to pay a hefty $500 fee for the Starlink device itself. On top of that, there are also about $99 charged every month as a subscription fee to the service. However, the question is whether the quality of service being provided by Starlink is really worth that $500 price tag. More importantly, is it worth to spend nearly $100 on it each month? Let's have a closer look to find out. All these points beg another question. At the end of the day, isn't fiber optic faster than satellite internet? Fiber optic is essentially internet supplied by a ground-laid fiber optic cable that delivers upload and download rates that are much faster than the average satellite internet. However, as firms like Google have said, there's nothing rapid about constructing the infrastructure necessary to get fiber to people's homes. That's not to say that there's anything simple about shooting satellites into space, but with fewer sharp-elbowed competitors and with a lot less red tape to cut through, there's every reason to believe that services like Starlink will reach the bulk of undeserved communities long before fiber ever will. Recent occurrences imply that Starlink might function as a dedicated phone service in the future as well. The user terminals link themselves to a network of more than 1,400 satellites to supply broadband internet to the users. SpaceX has also created a new series of brackets that are able to attach the terminals permanently on buildings and rooftops. Business Insider had earlier reported that customers who have already purchased the old dish are not able to replace it with the new model, and each account is only restricted to one terminal per subscription. While that is a bit unfortunate for the users of the beta version, significant improvements have been made in the new version to make it worthwhile. SpaceX had introduced the beta version of Starlink back in October 2020, making the company's first kit. This comprised of 23-inch wide dish mounting equipment, a Wi-Fi router, and all the cables accessible for qualified consumers. Starlink also allows consumers all over the globe to pre-book a connection for a refundable deposit of $99. Being the internet provider of SpaceX, Starlink seeks to send almost 12,000 satellites into low Earth orbit where they may give broadband internet access to those on the ground, especially those in distant and rural places where traditional internet infrastructure is absent. This particular aspect of the business is specifically lucrative for those US residents that are living away from the main grid without access to the traditional infrastructure. With so many satellites in low orbit at once, the objective is to have at least one satellite over every area of our planet, offering near-continuous internet connectivity to customers. To tap into the system, customers need to put a dish somewhere near their home, such as the roof, where they can obtain a clear view of the sky. To be more clear, if the vertical view is blocked with objects such as trees, then that would compromise the clear view and functionalities of the Starlink device. With a device as expensive as $500 with an added monthly charge of $99, what kind of benefits can be expected? Well, for starters, if the average internet speed of a household is considered, the number sits at about 99 megabits per second. Starlink, on the other hand, is offering speeds between 50 and 150 megabits per second already, with the numbers only going up as more satellites are launched into the sky. 
For the hefty price tag, the Starlink device is nothing ordinary. For instance, it continues to readjust its position to point towards the satellite sent out by Musk's company in space. The new satellite dish or user terminal, as SpaceX calls it, is smaller, lighter, and rectangular as compared to the old circular version. Since the ones that had bought it earlier would have to pay the entire $500 fee to get the new updated Starlink device, a look at the new features can be interesting. The new kit also features a Wi-Fi only router and is allegedly simpler than the old model. An Ethernet router will be offered separately for wired communications. The new rectangular dish is 12 inches broad and 19 inches tall, weighing about 9.2 pounds, which is a bit over 4 kilograms. It is about half the weight of the original 16-pound dish. Is the new device good enough to give a tough time to its competition? It depends on how fast SpaceX is growing its satellite internet plans. SpaceX's growth can be judged from the fact that during the years since its inception, the company has launched more than 1,000 Starlink satellites into orbit across dozens of successful missions. The constellation consists of over 1,600 satellites at this point and will eventually consist of many thousands of mass-produced small satellites in low Earth orbit. In January, during the first Starlink mission of 2021, SpaceX sent 60 satellites into orbit from Kennedy Space Center utilizing the landable, launchable Falcon 9 orbital rocket. Subsequent launches, the most recent of which carried another 51 satellites into orbit on September 13th, have pushed the total number of satellites in the constellation up to 1,791. Albeit, some of these satellites are prototypes or non-operational units that aren't working elements of the network. It is safe to say that SpaceX's growth is remarkable enough to warrant concerns about its business by its direct competitors. A few members of the scientific community have raised concerns about the impact of Starlink's low-Earth orbit satellites on night sky visibility. Although such concerns have been paid little heed otherwise, Starlink's competition is ensuring that it receives the utmost attention. Elon Musk has also publicly commented on the growth aspect of SpaceX and satellite internet. As we launch more satellites, install more ground stations, and improve our networking software data speed, latency and uptime will improve dramatically. To that end, Musk had tweeted in February that he expects Starlink Internet to double its top speeds by up to 300 megabits per second by the end of 2021. It must not also be forgotten that Elon Musk is the man behind the whole operation here, and SpaceX is the only firm on the globe with a landable, reusable rocket capable of carrying payload after payload into space. That's a big edge in the commercial space race. On top of that, Musk claimed in 2018 that Starlink would assist SpaceX with the money required to support the company's long-held desire to create a base on Mars. This goes a long way in showing the significance of the entire Starlink project for the company. Do you think Starlink is on its way to becoming a leading internet provider in the future? Let us know your thoughts in the comments down below.